Okay, hi there, it's Jeff back again with another in our series of key diagram videos. And this is the start of a little cluster of videos taking you through the absolutely key essential production and consumption externality uh, analysis diagrams. They are going to be so important, I think. Uh, externality is figuring heavily in the advanced information in particular for the 2022 papers. So let's spend a few minutes thinking together about negative production externalities and the key diagram that will get you the top marks in this topic. Externalities, of course, defined as spillover effects uh, from production or consumption, or perhaps sometimes both, for which no appropriate compensation is paid to one or more third parties. So they are third party spillover effects. Now, the key exam point to stress in your definition is that externalities lie outside the initial market transaction. They affect a third party. And without government intervention of one or different types, uh, the externalities are not reflected fully in the market price. And that can lead, of course, to market failure. Lots of different externalities. Not every exam board requires you to have four diagrams, but we'll work through all of them together. So negative production externalities, including things like commissions from factories, noise and air pollution, and waste. Uh, negative consumption externalities, including household waste, noise and air pollution. And then you have positive production externalities, including things like reforestation and the, the free sharing of academic research by universities. And a topical one, I think, given we're talking here in 2022, as we hopefully emerge from the pandemic, uh, positive consumption externalities, such as vaccinations to protect our health during a pandemic. So this video, let's work through together the key negative production externality. When you're ready, take a screenshot. Hopefully I'll go at a good pace and uh, you'll get the knowledge through pretty quickly. Externalities are all around us. A uh, very topical issue has been the sheer volume, thousands and thousands of raw sewage emissions from our antiquated sewage system. The, the water utility is under huge pressure now in terms of, uh, of the, the, the uh, immense quantity of raw sewage that's being emitted into rivers, tributaries and uh, bathing areas. Huge issue. And here's a great example. Uh, <laughs> in a Russian city a little while back, and it was 2021, stray dogs turn blue by chemical waste from a factory. Wow. Negative externalities are all around us. OK, back to business. Team economics, let's work through the diagram. So you put price and cost and benefit on the y-axis and you put the output and quantity or whatever it is. If it's contextualised in the exam, make sure you, you label these things thoroughly and accurately. We're going to assume here there's a demand curve, the marginal private benefit curve, MPB. And we're going to assume there are no externalities from consumption. So we can say that marginal private benefit also equals marginal social benefit. And the marginal private cost is the cost, in this case, to the producer. It's the cost of the next unit produced. The free market uh, is at an equilibrium where private benefit and cost are uh, in balance. And so that gives us output Q1. But of course, with negative production externalities, the marginal social cost, which equals private cost plus external cost, will be higher than the private cost. Now, uh, you don't have to do this, but I often draw this curve as diverging uh, because I think oftentimes the external costs of production get bigger, uh, the sheer volume of waste and, and pollution gets bigger at higher output levels. And, and so at Q1, there is a gap between the social cost and the private cost. And uh, there's the private cost uh, there shown, and here's the social cost. So nice way of thinking about it. And the gap is the marginal external cost, the vertical distance between MSC and MPC at the optimum output of Q1. So there's an externality, and there's a nice looking di a little triangle to the left, which we'll come back to in a second. So there's the externality, and uh, if the market stays at output Q1 with price P1, there is going to be a misallocation of resources. Where society would like to be is at Q2, which is the social optimum. You see, at Q2 and at price P2, then the marginal social cost is in balance with the marginal social benefit. So from society's point of view, they'd want less output when there are negative production externalities. You can't necessarily eliminate the externalities, 
but they'd certainly want less of it at the margin. And as a result, uh, if we overproduce at Q1 uh, relative to the social optimum, that is the misallocation of resources. The output's too high and the price is too low for society's welfare to be maximised. OK. So if uh, Q2 is the is the preferred output, but it's uh, uh, at, at that level, social cost is higher than social benefits beyond that level. Sorry. And that causes social welfare to fall. And therefore, let's put some labels on. Let's put some letters. It's always better to letter than shade in an exam. Uh, the deadweight loss of social welfare is if the equilibrium is Q1, is shown by the area A, B, C. A, B, C. What is the essential point about negative externalities and market failure? Negative production externalities. Well, the, the key problem is that economic agents, it could be an airline, it could be a, a chemical factory, who knows, it could be an intensive farming operation. Economic agents operating in their own self-interest, for example, profit-maximising firms, uh, often do not take into account of the costs their decisions impose on others. And if the market fails to price externalities properly, that leads to a misallocation of resources from a social perspective. There we go. That's the key diagram for negative production externalities. I hope you found that helpful in your revision. It's going to be a really key diagram to draw in your exam. So stay positive, stay happy, and uh, see you sometime soon.